The title of this presentation is Understanding Photosynthesis, uh, Time Resolved Fluorescence Under the Spotlight, and I will introduce you to the um, analysis of data from Time Resolved Fluorescence. Uh, the technique has been explained in uh, a previous presentation. I will just quickly recap it. So we use a, um, a ultra, uh, ultra short laser pulse to um, excite our system, uh, which for example is an antenna binding pigments. Um, so the laser will induce absorption of light and this can um, uh, produce an excited state in, uh, in some of the pigments. Uh, the, the excited state will then relax back to the ground state and by doing so it can emit fluorescence. Now, there are many processes that um, uh, can take place at the excited states, uh, such as energy transfer, photochemistry, so charge separation, and relaxation to lower uh, energy states. All these processes can be relevant for photosynthesis. And fluorescence is a valuable tool because it allows us, uh, by measuring it, to uh, observe the uh, dynamics undergone by the excited states. Now, all these information are embedded in our data. Uh, we want now a tool uh, to extract this information from them. Um, so this is just a um, uh, sample uh, measurement that I show you. Um, and basically, in, in this, uh, from this, you can see that uh, time resolved resistance data appear like a, a matrix um, as a function of both the wavelength and the time. Uh, the meaning is that uh, different uh, fluorescent uh, spectrum is emitted at different time. So you see that at time zero here, um, the laser is exciting our system and the um, signal appears and then it decays in time. And as it decays, it uh, moves, it um, shifts to longer wavelengths. Um, more um, into detail, uh, we can see that if we take a slice um, constant time, uh, we see basically the fluorescent spectrum that is emitted at that specific time. For instance, we can see that at time zero, the spectrum peaks at more or less 680 nanometers, but then as the time goes by, fluorescence decays, okay, and it also moves to um, uh, longer wavelengths. Uh, another way of looking uh, at our data is to take slices along the um, wavelength, so at constant wavelength, and to look at uh, the emission trace, the fluorescence emission trace, at that specific wavelength. For example, here we see that fluorescence emitted at 680 nanometer is emitted quite fast, whereas uh, if we take a slice at 690 nanometers, fluorescence emission is lower, and it is even slower at 700 nanometers, um, which also starts from a um, lower level at time zero. Now, um, let's take just a, a very simple model system with three chlorophylls, uh, which uh, emit at different uh, wavelengths. Um, and the first one, chlorophyll one, uh, abs can absorb uh, light and then transfer the excitation energy to um, a second chlorophyll, chlorophyll two, with a specific rate. And then the second chlorophyll transfers energy to the third one with a different rate, the third one will finally relax to the ground state uh, with um, a relaxation rate. Now the um, excited state dynamic in this system is described by so-called rate equations, which are um, first order equation, meaning that the rates are uh, linear uh, in the concentration of the excited states of the species involved. And um, the, um, being first rate equations, their solution um, is basically given by exponentials. So this means that the concentration of the excited states of the different species will rise and decay uh, exponentially with exponential loss. So for example, if we pick these values, 50, 150 and 500 picoseconds for the uh, given, uh, for the rates, um, here, uh, we get these concentration profiles for the excited states of the uh, three chlorophyll species. The first one, the yellow chlorophyll, decays very fast, and uh, by decaying it populates a second species, um, the orange chlorophyll, which then um, basically uh, decays and populates by energy transfer a third chlorophyll, which then finally decays to the ground state. Now, uh, if uh, each chlorophyll has a different uh, emission spectrum and a different color, this explains why, for instance, when we um, change the time of emission, the um, emitted spectrum also changes. Uh, or, uh, as well, if we change the uh, emission wavelength, we will see a different trace for the emission, uh, a different time profile for the emission. Now, uh, and this is basically uh, our time-resolved fluorescence data set would appear for this kind of system. Now we wish to do the opposite. So 
from a data set, we want to extract information and uh, obtain a model that describes our system. The, what we know so far is that the kinetics are first order, so the time evolution is uh, described by exponentials. And uh, we also know that data have two dimensions that we can exploit, so time and wavelength. Uh, our goals for this analysis are, first of all, to understand how many species, how many different excited states participate in the dynamics, and to get their uh, fluorescence spectra. We also want to know the rates for the uh, excited state processes that take place and to assign each rate to each specific process and also to um, the species that are involved in such process. So what we normally do first is uh, a global analysis, so-called global analysis, which means analyzing all the wavelengths with basically the same set of um, uh, time exponentials. What we get from this kind of analysis is a decomposition of our data into a discrete set of a spectrum as a function of the wavelength here and um, uh, an exponential with a specific lifetime tau. Um, the significance of this, so these spectra are called DAS, which means decay associated spectra, and the meaning of this DAS so, is that each DAS represents a spectral change due to a specific process taking place at the excited state, and each process will uh, be associated to a specific lifetime tau. So, for example, if we um, um, do global analysis on the data set that I show, we get this kind of dust. Now, let's look at, at them in more detail. We have three uh, dust components and they represent three different processes. A dust that um, compris, uh, compresses a, a positive and negative part uh, represents uh, an energy transfer process, where the positive part stands for the spectrum of the um, donor species and the negative side represents the spectrum of uh, the acceptor species. So for instance, in the yellow uh, dust, we have a positive part here, um, which represents the um, em emission spectrum of the donor, the energy transfer donor. And the negative side of the yellow dust represents the spectrum of the acceptor. So the donor is around 640, 660 nanometer, the acceptor around 680 nanometers. Similar interpretation uh, holds for the orange dust. The red dust is uh, instead entirely positive and it represents just an excited state decaying to the ground state. Uh, then we can uh, kind of uh, come out with a sequential um, uh, model for um, uh, our system. So um, uh, according to a sequential model, basically we have a series of um, uh, events and a series of um, species that, that convert into the following one with a specific rate. If we adopt this sequential model to our uh, uh, data set, starting from the global analysis that we already performed, we end up with these three spectra for the three species. So we have, a, um, uh, let's say, a yellow chlorophyll that uh, decays in 20 picosecond and populates the orange um, spectrum chlorophyll. And then this one will decay in 100 picosecond, populating the last uh, species, the red one, which finally decays to the ground state in 500 picoseconds. Now, um, of course, life is uh, much more complicated than this, so normally uh, we need to uh, describe our system using a more complicated um, fitting strategy. That is, we have to come out with models that include uh, also different types of processes, for example, uh, multiple excitations, that is, many um, uh, chlorophylls can be excited at the same time, and for example, they, also, they can also include branching or uh, equilibria, that is, uh, forward and back uh, rates of energy transfer. This, this, this strategy uh, falls under the name of target analysis. So uh, to conclude, we saw that fluorescence allows observation of processes undergone by excited states after light absorption, such as energy transfer, photochemistry, relaxation. All these processes are relevant for photosynthesis. These processes have specific rates and involve species with defined fluorescence spectrum, uh, and they also normally have uh, first order kinetics. Time resolved fluorescence data are a function of wavelength and time. They can be globally analyzed to get the rates of excited state processes and the fluorescence spectra of the species involved in such processes. Decay associated spectra, or DAS, represent parallel processes taking place with defined rate and spectral changes. In a sequential scheme, um, the so called evolution associated spectra, or EAS, represent the spectra of species converting into each other with a certain order.
And finally, more complex kinetics requires sophisticated fitting schemes, uh, which fall under the name of target analysis. I want to conclude with, uh, by advertising um, this very valuable free uh, software for global and target analysis named Glotaran, which was developed uh, at my university, the Freie Universität in Amsterdam, and it serves as a um, graphical user interface uh, to the R package team. So it's very user friendly because of this um, graphical interface. It works on many uh, different operating systems and um, it can um, uh, it can do global and target analysis of um, all kinds of uh, time resolved uh, measurements. So not just fluorescence, but also transient absorption and microscopy data. It can be downloaded for free at um, uh, the website shown here. And uh, on this website, also tutorial, free tutorials are available for new users.